In this episode, Rick tells us which head casting is the best to use, and how that casting was almost lost due to some corporate shenanigans, and most of the shortcomings of the stock intake manifolds. Don't worry though, he also covers how to modify the manifolds to increase power. <laughs> yeah, we've got more questions. We've chatted before, you've told me uh, about a couple different cylinder heads that you're particularly proud of. The best casting to use is the 92 or 93 NH head. NH is New Haven, and it'll have cast right in the head. If you look down, like between a couple of the rockers, it'll say 92, 93, 94, 95, and it'll say either New Haven or Tuffy. Now, you don't want to use the Tuffy head if you don't have to. I would okay. use like the 92 or 93 four liter head, New Haven, NH. Mm. Yeah, and, and also that it's not the D-shaped port, it's the tongue type port. You can see the exhaust port. It's like the, it's the 92 and 93 has got the tongue type port. Everything about the 92 head is the best. So what is it specifically about those heads that make them uh, the best four liter head? The, and the, one of them is the boss for the valve guy. It had a big oh, ass okay. boss inside the port, big wide thing. Mm -hmm. And what I do is I go in there with a grinder and I narrow it. I narrow it down and then I round it back off. I give them a flow box that had it narrowed down. They come and pick it up and they go, hey, you changed this. And I said, yeah, you don't need all that metal in there. Mm -hmm. Well, it's what if they can't hit the target? I said, if they can't hit that target, I said, they should go somewhere else. So by hit the target, you mean drilling the guides? You know, when you add up all the casting, you know, the casting variation and the machining variation, I, like I said, you know, it could everything could shift 90,000. I made that thing so that it could shift 90,000 and still have metal around the valve. So you took a big chunk of the valve guide out of the middle of the port? Yeah, right? I just took it out of there to try to get some more flow out of it. The majority of the flow on a production engine is the valve seat. So the valve shape, you know, so the curtain area is... The curtain area is the area when the valve starts opening off the seat. That area around that's opening up is the, called the curtain area. As it opens, right. the net allows the flow to come in around the valve, depending on, you know, if there's shrouding or something like that, you know, like you got a wall, like the bore wall or something's right next to there, then you're going to have some shrouding there, so the majority of the flow is going to be everywhere away from that shrouding area. On a 4-liter, on the, mm -hmm. the two intake ports that are close to each other, the wall on the port is called the common wall. It's wall common to the other wall on the other yep. port, so they're right, they're right next, next to each, each other. other. And then the head bolt is right through there. The outside wall is, the you know, away from the common wall. They changed the outside wall. They changed the, the way it was shaped. They got some new heads cast, and they came in, and they put them on the dyno, and they, were, they lost a bunch of power. And I mean a lot. My boss come down on me. What the hell's going on? The four liter. It's not making any power. I said, well, what's it making? I don't know, about 155 horse. Immediately, I said, well, give me the head off that engine. And I got the head, and I started looking at it, and I went, wait a minute. This whole wall has moved over. The entire wall has been moved over. I was scratching my head. So I got on the phone. I said, Julian, I want you to come down here and look at something. He was the guy in charge of the casting. How comes this port on the earlier head is this dimension, and then the new head here is this dimension? How did that happen? Well, you remember when I brought that head down? I said, no. I said, I don't even remember this. The word had spread, and they had an emergency meeting, and I was called in, and Julian, and Ford, and all the other engineers are in there, and there's a big crowd, and the chief engineer. The focus went right to me. They came to me, and I said, well, this wall has been moved. I brought a head, I brought the new casting, and then the old casting, but they were both cut. I cut right through them, so I could see it, so I could measure it. And I said, this whole wall's been moved. Well, how did that come to be? And I just turned and looked at Julian, and I said, you're going to have to ask the casting guy about this. He said, I don't know anything about it. And then the chief engineer got mad. He says, okay, hold it, hold it, hold it. We're going to fix this. We're going to put it back the way it was. End of story. We're going to put it back. You figure out how that happened? He changed it. Huh, and I told him that. That's what I wanted to know. And when he retired, he told me, yeah, I moved that over. My boss was pressed. See if you can do something to that head to make it better. And he said, I just arbitrarily moved that wall. So you had, to, you had to fix that, and then it went back to the best flowing hitch medium. 
It was good, yeah. The so guys should be on the lookout for the 92 to 93. Those are the best heads. The 92 head, that would be my my choice, but I'd take a 93. Do not use a 94. Do not use a 95 or 6 or 7 or the tuppy or any earlier. Don't use a 91 head because that was a low floor. So did you also work the intake? So you had two different styles, the log style and the horseshoe style intake. Did you do the work on oh, those as well? Oh, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Can you tell us a bit about those? Because there's been controversy for years about those manifolds. Yeah. Well, if you could incorporate the best of both of those manifolds into another manifold, you'd have everything. Well, let me explain. The rake manifold was a cost-cutting measure, and, and it doesn't have much plenum on it, and it's, like, cheaper to cast because it doesn't use much metal. But it works pretty good for production. If you want to have a little bit more performance, you put the horseshoe manifold on because it's got a more mm -hmm. plenum volume. Oh, it adds a bunch of power. You know, I needed more plenum on the rake, but packaging constraints and... You get more plenum on the rake manifold. Would it perform as well or better than the uh, the bigger horseshoe manifold? I know a guy that's doing that, putting more plenum on a... Uh, he's in North Carolina, I believe. I've done it myself. Oh, you've done it yourself? I have. On the rake? Yeah. On the rake? I've built a couple of rake manifolds that have bigger plenums on it. If you could stick at least a 250 cubic inch plenum on there, it'd help because that's about the size mm -hmm. of the engine. You know, you can go more than that because of the throttle body size. If you put a bigger throttle body on, 250 cubic inch plenum would be fine. But you might need yep. a 60 or 62 throttle body, and the production went to a 58. That's that's the next topic. So between those two manifolds, uh, they're, they're actually relatively close. So the guy you were talking about down there in the Carolina, he did some testing on them, and it turns out the rake manifold ported well, actually makes more power than the larger horseshoe manifold. Uh, yeah. Based on his yeah, 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 that's absolutely right. Uh, it's like a half inch shorter runner than the mm -hmm. horseshoe manifold. It's like a seven and a half inch runner, if I remember right. The horseshoe is eight inch runner. The horseshoe has a bigger plenum, mm -hmm. and the horseshoe should make pretty good power for a production for a low low power PM. But the nice thing about the rake manifold, there's a couple areas that I'd like to, you know, like modify if I could nowadays. Plenum would be one. But the other one would be, you should have like a little air catcher, like the air coming through the throttle body, coming down the runner. Okay, you got the first mm -hmm. runner right there. You should have a little right. bit of a, just a little bit sticking out on the back part, like with the air would come up and hit that little thing and curve down the runner. So it's it actually pick up more air for that runner. Yeah, thing is that one and six flow gangbuster. They flow like a son of a gun. Two and five are not so good because the runner is coming in at the wrong angle. On two and five, the port is coming in one way and the runner is coming in back asswards. You know, when I cut the first plenum off of that thing, I looked it up and I thought, why does the air have to change direction to go back to where it came from to get to the port on these two? <laughs> That's right. It should be straight. At least straight on the two Siamese ports. They should be just straight in. I can't say that I didn't say anything about it. I did, but I got overruled. They have logistics going on because there's all kinds of other stuff underneath the hood there. And I said, well, you know, like one and two and four and five and six should be straight in. I said, uh, three and four is okay. I said, but if I was going to do it, I would have every runner follow the line of sight right to the valve. Nowhere would it change direction and turn into a turbulence generator. If you ever look at a pro stock engine, the intake runner to the port is convergence right to the valve. You don't want turbulence in the port. The port is the last place you want. If you want turbulence, generate it in the combustion chamber. To wrap up on the intake, it, it, okay. one thing, I, what I did for was I hacked a bunch of the runner lengths out. And I'm, okay. I'm gonna run bigger RPM. Yeah. And it seems like it actually helps straighten out those ports. You end up with a shorter length to the head itself. It just needs a little finesse, number two and number five for ones, and then the other one is like three and four are right next to the throttle body. And, and there's yeah. high turbulence on the flow bench, it's noisy. Three and four, mm -hmm. real noisy. It's tearing the air yeah. right around three and four are opening. Sure. Yeah, two and five, they're, it's because the port, the runner is going in the wrong direction to the port. So you got turbulence right. generated downstream, which is the worst. Yeah, I'd rather have it upstream. You know, downstream means you. closer to the valve. So how and important one is and that six runner? Perfect, like, critical. You know, talk yeah. a little bit about that. Because it's, it's yeah. got some pretty long runners on those things. And, you yeah. know, the horseshoe is eight inch. Torque. The torque really comes up comes alive when you start adding plenum. You put a bigger yeah. plenum on the rake. So leave the runner length and get more yeah, plenum you, on there. 
You have more plenum in a seven and a half inch runner and you put the gas on, it's like 7.545 or something. How big a plenum would be ideal? Four, five hundred, six hundred. I see because you can't package a lot of that. So you, if, if you could put a 400 plenum on it, that'd be pretty good. And what size, uh-huh. uh, what size uh, throttle body, 58? The modeling I've done really starts to wake up once it gets up around 70. You start getting it above 70 and it's like you don't have any restriction there, but. Well, the thing is, see, uh, I've modeled the 58 throttle body on a stock four liter. It runs in stock eliminator, our stock automatic. And the index is 1405. These run 1279. 1279, wow, with a 58. <laughs> and that truck weighs 3,300 pounds. Wow. A short up. bed Comanche 92 weighs about 2,700 pounds soaking wet. So you think 58 is big enough, then? No, it, it, you know, it depends on, you know, what you're doing. That stocker is it's a stock flowing head. Now, that head flows pretty good. It's a 92 head. I did a valve job. Right. So, you know, it's the NHRA specs. I had one port that flowed 230. That's pretty good for a stock valve and everything. That's for a stock valve and head, yeah. Just ask, ask another question, unless you still got more intake questions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I think we probably got it. The only other thing that people are so concerned about is uh, all the heat on the intake manifold, so I guess that could... Oh yeah, yeah, you could put heat wrap around the intake, you know, the reflective mm-hmm. tape, and then you could put right. heat wrap around the exhaust manifold or header or whatever you're doing. Yep, and I think then, that's uh, what, uh, what most guys are doing. So one of the big questions is, uh, why didn't you put a cross flow head on there? Well, not why didn't you do it. Did you test a cross flow head, and if it tested well, why didn't it happen? No, we didn't do one. You didn't test one? No, it was strictly uh, use the 258 because we like that engine but we want Mm -hmm. more performance. That's what I started with. In the next episode, Rick will address the four liters bottom end, issues with the crank, cylinder block, and camshaft that must be addressed in order to make a 10,000 RPM motor.